All right, folks, so we are going to do a deep dive. It's been a while since we've looked at one of CNN's voter panels with Allison Camerota. And usually, you know, if anything, these are entertaining, but sometimes they're genuinely insightful. Other times they make me lose faith in humanity. But this one, it got my interest because it consists of six people, three of them former Trump supporters, the other three, uh, current Trump supporters. Now, they're not asked generally about why they support Donald Trump. These questions are all about whether or not they support Donald Trump's handling of COVID-19. And even if you're supporting Donald Trump for some policy reason, like you want the wall, if you genuinely think that he's doing a good job handling COVID-19, then I question your sanity. So with that being said, let's go ahead and watch. I haven't seen all of this. I've seen some of it. I've skimmed it. Um, and this one is, uh, it's something. So <laughs> take, it, take it away, Allison. Show of hands, how many of you voted for President Trump in 2016? Okay, all of you voted for President Trump. Show of hands, how many of you plan to vote for him again in November? Okay, three hands went up. Got to pause it right there. Okay. After there have been 150,000 Americans who have died because of COVID-19, an eviction crisis coming. And this president is focused on statues. Like, to still support him, you have to be in a cult. Like, you've drank in the Kool-Aid and you just believe that he can do no wrong. I mean, there's no other way to rationalize this. Um, but nonetheless, I'm not going to get too much here into the... Uh, overanalyzation of this because uh, I think this is going to get spicy. Daniel, tell us your thoughts. I believe that his handling of the pandemic has been horrendous. I think his lack of accountability and um, an old political term, he waffles on everything. He, he did say this, he didn't say that. And, and, and it, it, he meant this, but he didn't mean that. I, I, it, he's totally unpredictable. I don't think any... Okay. I'm glad that you have come to your senses, but is that really a new phenomenon with Donald Trump? I mean, wasn't he contradicting himself like every five minutes in 2016 and 2015? Like, for you now to have this revelation, I mean, you can argue that it's good that he changed his mind, and I can kind of give you a pass if you have evolved politically, but I mean, Donald Trump has always been the same person. He's always been a bumbling buffoon and an imbecile who's narcissistic. So, you know, it's weird that you'd point this out now. Nonetheless, I'm not going to shit on you for abandoning Donald Trump and getting out of the cult. I know leaving a cult might be a little bit scary, but you've done it. You made a huge step and I, I applaud you for it. Anyone could have handled it any better. Listen to health experts. When Donald what? Trump says something about ingesting Lysol, don't take it, obviously that's an absurd statement. I'm she just said that nobody else could have handled it any better, but then she says, oh, well, when he talks about injecting Lysol, that's an absurd statement. So wouldn't you argue that if they didn't make that type of idiotic statement about injecting Lysol, that they could have handled it better just by not being stupid? I mean, these people are in a fucking cult. They don't want to believe that Daddy Trump can do anything wrong. It's just ridiculous. He should not be speaking on health matters frankly. then why do you but support he him he's the president he wasn't taking it as seriously as he should but the entire you just no 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 no, no 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 you just said that it couldn't have been handled any better by anyone else and then you say he's not taking it seriously like there's just no consistency and uh she said let me go back a little bit that the entire government has failed yes of course but i mean leadership is important during this crisis. So if you're admitting that Donald Trump has failed in some areas, then overall, how could you with a straight face say, oh, well, nobody else could have really done a better job than him. I mean, if they just had basic common sense, they probably could have based on your own reasoning. Wasn't taking it as seriously as he should, but the entire government failed us. They were focused on impeachment as COVID was spreading. What? Impeachment was over in January, was it not? Like, am I am I missing up, messing up that timeline in my head? Like, what are you talking about? That's what they were focused on. They were all- <laughs> That's what they were focused on, she's so smug. Show of hands, <laughs> have any of you had a friend or loved one or know someone who got very sick with COVID and or died? 
it's funny how the two people, uh, two of the three people who abandoned Donald Trump, uh, they have people who, or they know people who have COVID-19. Interesting. Okay, so... Oh, okay, never mind. I guess three three of the three people. I don't know why that took her so long. Three of you know people who got sick. Tommy, tell us what you think about President Trump's response to coronavirus. Well, um, they didn't get extremely sick and die, but I had a nephew and several friends that have tested positive for COVID. Uh, I will say this. I am a business owner. My wife and I own a fitness, a 24-7 fitness center. We had to close our gym for 84 days. We've had the business for seven years, uh, and I just want to point out again that this hap- this all happened uh, while Donald Trump has been president. Trump has done. Yeah. Um, and like, I feel like it shouldn't have to take you knowing someone who's been affected to actually take this seriously. It's extremely serious. Like my friend, one of my best friends has had COVID-19 now for like three months. It's extremely fucking serious. It shouldn't get to this point to where you're only taking it seriously if you know someone who's affected. I mean, it's so frustrating. What he can do. Okay, this is exactly what's happening is people, small businesses are losing their businesses, that's their livelihood because of this pandemic. I have people- That was a little bit sus. Um, I think that she caught herself. She was going to say plandemic probably. Uh, she's a Trumpy person uh, a chud so i'm guessing that she's a little bit of conspiratorial L- let's let her carry on who i do know who have tested positive for covid my in-laws okay one she had to wear the mask because she's got allergies i think the breathing of her own breath and having to you know deal with allergies i think that got her sick what <laughs> what the fuck what lady what the fuck are you talking about you literally just said that someone who tested positive from for COVID-19, who you know, your in-law, you think that they got sick from wearing a mask because they breathed in their own germs? Like, are you saying that she gave herself COVID-19, that it, like, materialized from her own body? What are you talking about? Like, the conspiracy that you're concocting doesn't even make sense on a basic level. Like, what the fuck? You are a psychopath. She started to get a fever. She's over 60 years old. She panics because there's a fear mongering going on. Maybe because it's killing a lot of fucking people and she's right to panic. Oh, you're going to die. So she runs a test her positive. She goes home, had fever for two days. She's fine now. Good. That doesn't mean that it's not serious, you fucking idiot. She's older. I guess I'm confused about your point. I mean, do you think that people I are not dying? Know. Call her a jackass, Allison. Do it. Call her a dipshit. The country? What I'm trying to say and make a point to is it. 382 million Americans, 4 million have tested positive, and 145,000 have died. Yeah, so you're okay. willing to live with those okay, numbers. Those know, numbers are okay for you. Thing. Doing but the math? Here's the, no, no number of death is okay. If you do okay. the math, is a 99.9% survival rate. What? If you do the math, it's a 99.9% survival rate. What math are we talking about? Like, what numbers are you plugging in? Because that's not what I've seen. Like, the rate of death for COVID-19 is like 2 or 3%. And I'm going to pull it up because I'm curious. Because I don't know what she's doing to get this number. Um, 99.9%. Like, that would be... That would be a different story. Like, it'd still be serious. Like, you're still sick. You don't want to get it. But that mortality rate... That does not seem accurate. Yeah. So this is from ourworlddata.org. Let me pull it up. It's not accurate. She's pulling that out of her ass. So look at these countries who are affected. So the United States, mortality rate, right here, just under 4%. And it rose to uh, almost 6% in May. So I don't know where she's getting this number from. Um, Wow, in Italy, it was like... It is actually, as of July 28th, uh, 14%. That's insane. So no, this isn't this isn't something where 99.9% of the people are okay. And even if we assumed that it wasn't as fatal as she's saying it is, there's still long-term health issues that COVID-19 causes. 
I mean scar tissue in your lungs that give you lifelong breathing issues, blood clots in younger people. I mean, this person is so stupid. Like, she has to be getting her information from, like, InfoWars or some weird, like, quack online who's posting YouTube videos. Like, I don't know, but what she's saying is incredibly, like, troubling, and she's confident about it. Like, this is Dunning-Kruger in action. What are we freaking out about, okay? I don't understand. Real numbers and facts that we didn't pull out of our anuses? 99%. In 2017, 2018, there was 13% more deaths in heart disease than in COVID. You can't spread heart disease, you fucking moron. If I cough on someone and I have like something like heart disease, I'm not going to give them heart disease. This is a contagious virus. What's not to understand? Also, three times more deaths of accidents and car accidents, but we didn't shut down the interstates and take people's cars away. Like, are car accidents contagious? Like, do they spread? I mean, it's it's contained to an area. Like, you could see a pileup, but I mean, like, this isn't the same thing. That's a false equivalence. And I love how, like, she's clearly glancing at her numbers because she's, like, she's, she's bringing the facts. She's, she's schooling these libtards. But, like, lady, you're fucking stupid. Like... You're speaking out of your asshole, and you don't know what the fuck you're saying, and you're pulling out these weird, bizarre statistics that you probably got from fucking Infowars. Like, what the fuck? I hope they correct her on this. We didn't shut down the freeways because there's car accidents. What we did was we did science and testing, and we came to the conclusion that seatbelts were necessary. Okay, I'll take that. To keep us that. out there motoring along as safely as possible. And as far as heart disease goes, I can't walk into my local supermarket and catch that from the idiot standing next to me. I literally made that point. Okay, okay, good job. I have a breathing uh, problem, uh, and therefore, if I don't wear no, a mask, uh, I'm an idiot. Okay. I have a breathing problem, and if I don't wear a mask, I'm an idiot. Yes, you're an idiot, and you do not have a breathing problem that will lead to you not being able to wear a mask. You're just a fucking stupid person, and you don't want to wear a mask because you think that it's liberty or tyranny or some bullshit like that. Like, if you can't wear a mask, genuinely, then stay the fuck home. Because you're clearly like a psychopath. So, uh, like, these types of people, I swear to God, make me lose so much faith in humanity. Because this person, like, I don't know what state she's from, but her vote might actually uh, matter more than yours. Like, if she's from a swing state, her vote has more power than uh, my vote or, or your vote possibly. Like, this type of stupidity that we're seeing, where she literally says, oh, I can't wear a mask because I have a breathing problem. Sure, what is that? What breathing problem? Asthma? Like, what are we talking about here? Be specific. Cite the specific breathing problem that you are not able to wear a mask. Like, she can't. She can't cite that because she's just... She is an idiot. Like, there's there's not really anything I can say. Like, this lady is so stupid. Like, out of all of these MAGA chuds, um, namely the top three, this lady is so stupid. Like, this is exactly the type of um, idiocy I'd expect from a Trump supporter. So you'd rather I die because I can't breathe with a mask on and I'm an idiot because I didn't wear the mask. Okay. Yes. Yes. Put on the mask. It's not going to kill you, Karen. Do you know how, if how you, hypocritical if you're gonna come, that is? If you're going to come to my grocery store and use that feeble excuse, yes, you are. They, you can breathe fine with a mask. I cannot. I cannot. Oh, my God. <laughs> this fucking lady. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot. Uh, she is making me want to, like, bang my head against the desk. Um, okay, then you just don't leave your house then. Um, don't leave your house. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um, it's a fucking pandemic. Um, you probably, she, she probably does not believe in it. Like, you know, at the beginning when she said it's a pandemic, she was going to call it a pandemic. So she thinks it's a hoax. Like, this lady is a fucking psychopath. Like, it should be scary that, uh, people like her, uh, vote in this country. Like, these are the people who... You know, as much as I want to encourage political participation, like, I hope that she stops voting and stops participating in politics because Jesus fuck. So, Damani, what's it like to hear the strong reservations of your fellow panelists here? They're dumb. Well, you know, I think that everyone has a right to their own opinion. Both sides are just equally correct. Shut up, you fence sitter. Take a stance. I also do believe that uh, here in America, we have a lot of serious problems that need to be taken care of that honestly have been allowed to fester for far too long. I don't think there's anything Trump. That was a very like milk toast centrist answer. Do Sad. that would make his supporters that are dug in not vote for him. Yeah, because it's a cult. Say it's a cult. In my it's opinion, a, it's a cult. If that were the Say case, it. then they would then they would be thinking like me right now.
I'm hearing a repeat of 2016. The anti-Trumpers, the people who are like, oh, I can't vote for him. It's not fair to call someone like okay. me a never-Trumper because I voted for the man in 2016. <laughs> Correct. Me too. Thank you, Agreed. Tommy. Yeah. Yeah, you all did. I mean, but, you all but did. It's, it's, um, what I'm saying is a rhetoric. It's a rhetoric of the never-Trump movement. I didn't say you It's one. not a rhetoric. It's, it's based rhetoric on a fact. repeat of 2016. It's a 2016. Right. Okay. I'm genuinely worried that this lady is, like, going to get a show on Fox News or OAN like she she has all the talking points down like she has her numbers from infowars uh she she's got it down she has her talking point she knows exactly what to say like she she could be a star in the trump movement um so it's like you see her and you think oh wow this lady is scary thank god this is just one person but like these types of people in america right now given how bad the discourse is have the potential to like become famous because of their stupidity um and not like because they're being shamed because they get like a show on the blaze tv or some shit like that we, but we, we at least gave him the, we gave him the chance we gave him the opportunity we gave him the chance to what he's done in office not what he did you shouldn't have though that's not a good thing on his twitter feed or his personal life or private life prior to becoming president i think we need someone with the temperament of donald trump even though sometimes he is unpredictable i think we need what? the temperament of donald trump because he is someone who is willing to call out what other people are will refuse to call out and i think that's something that we really need right now. what the temperament of donald trump so the temperament of like a six-year-old who's throwing a tantrum in the grocery store the temperament of Donald Trump, like out of all the qualities in Donald Trump, you could say, look, I, I like that he has a big mouth and he tweets all the time. I think it's funny. It triggers the libs. But out of all the qualities, the one thing that you really don't want in Donald Trump, like his worst attribute is his temperament. And he says, oh, we need someone with the temperament of Donald Trump. My dude, that's fucking dumb. I'll say one more thing. I saw an interview with Donald Trump with the guy from Barstool Sports the other night, and something that Donald Trump said hit me uh, it, pretty ironically. He said, you know, that the preceding years prior to me announcing running for president were the best of my life. I, was, I can't remember his exact quote, but he was fabulously wealthy and had this great life. And I would just like to remind him that Barack Obama was president during the best times of his life. So if Donald Trump loses, <laughs> we will get through it. <laughs> last comment because it's like the thing that irritates me is they go from like being a MAGA chud to like a full-on like a uh, democratic party sycophant um when you know barack obama's years that wasn't good for most normal people like rich people were doing fine but obama was bombing seven different countries he ramped up the drone war that george w bush started i mean look <laughs> If you're leaving the MAGA cult and you're going, you know, to uh, the Democratic Party sycophancy side, I don't know, whatever, right? But I mean, some of this is just, um, it's it's soul crushing. Like this lady, uh, we have to go back to her. The lady who literally is going to fucking die if you make her wear a mask. I mean, do they not realize how stupid they sound? Like, are they worried about the surgeons who perform these like 12 hour long surgeries? Like, are you worried that they're going to die? I mean, you're complaining about wearing a mask for like 20 minutes while you go into Walmart to buy fucking ice cream, but people wear masks as part of their job every single day. Why aren't they dropping dead? Why aren't we seeing all of these deaths because of people that have these breathing conditions, quote unquote, breathing conditions who are wearing masks? Like, I, I can't. I can't deal with this. This shit... I shouldn't have watched this because every time I watch these fucking videos, it makes me lose faith in humanity and they're always entertaining, but... um. It's not good for the soul. <laughs> it's not good for the soul. I swear to God, if I see this lady on like Fox News or OAN or on YouTube um, for whatever reason and she starts to like become famous, I'm going to lose my shit um, <laughs> because this is the exact person who would like make it in right wing media who like the billionaires would fund because she's bombastic and like she's she's confident. Uh, OK, yeah, we're done here. Uh, nothing left to see, folks. Yeah. I cannot. I cannot. Ooh, ooh, we have a special snowflake. Girly Mike Fettuccini needs your support on Patreon. What a loser. Visit patreon.com slash humanist report to support the low ratings humanist report. Sad. 
my views are much higher. <laughs>